The Alpha Sessions. Hi everyone, welcome to Alpha Sessions. Today we've got the lovely Josh Aitken with us. Hey Josh, how are you doing? Hi. I'm good, thanks. Good. How are you? <laughs> Great. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Great to have you with us. Really excited to talk to you. Um, I just wanted to like jump right, in, jump right in and ask you, how did your journey into music start? Did you come from like a musical background? What's the story? It's, um, well, I can make it sound like God opened the clouds and handed me a guitar, but it really was as simple as um, I was in school one day and someone came in um, and I guess they were selling their business, but they were like, here's a guitar and this is how you play it. And I thought it was great. So I stayed behind and approached him at the end and was like, wow, it's amazing. Like, what do you uh, do? And then as soon as I found out about guitar, I started a um, like a Beatles tribute band in primary school when I was like, I don't know, nine. Uh, wow. So it just kind of went from there, really. So you didn't come from like, there's no background, there's no kind of like big uh, kind my, of musical history. My mother plays uh, piano, but like not that much. And it's very like classical Right, it's more recital than creation. Um, and the other side of my family's tone deaf, so yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so you're the trailblazer, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so ever since you were nine, you just kind of like been making music and, and yeah, really looked back. Well, I mean, there was loads of we're a wires family, we've got lots of like gadgets and stuff at home, so there was right. always I, I found a microphone, I think it was from Singstar, um, or something like that, and just kind of started making stuff, but um, it wasn't you know, I didn't just enter the game suddenly able to mix and produce and that I've done a lot of weird stuff to, to get to you know being able to produce and release a single which is fun yeah. a lot of learning yeah how would you describe your musical style well um this is extremely cliche but I'm an album man mm -hmm. so but uh, so a lot of the good albums that I've listened to are like kind of Clapton and like that kind of 80s era of mm -hmm. stuff where you kind of if you're going to listen to it, you might as well listen to the whole thing. Yeah. And so a lot of my stuff's kind of born from that arrangement of like, um, you have your acoustic guitar, lead guitar, bass and drums, like very good, like okay. classic setup. I guess it's just um, from there, like singer songwriter with some guitar influenced stuff, which is um, why I like, I guess, John Mayer so much because mm. it's, it's pop with just enough guitar stuff for nerds to be interested in, which is what I like. Yeah. And you are a self-proclaimed lounge lizard. Yeah. What, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean for you? Well, um, it was, well, I'm kind of using it ironically because, yeah. um, well, a lot of people that know me, I'm not um, the, uh, that cool, to be honest. But, um, you know, I was just getting the image of the man in the velvet suit at the bar. <laughs> I love so. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, you know, um, I'd like, well, I guess we'll get onto it later, but like aesthetics of EPs, I really like grandeur, grandiose style and such. And like kind of even, to the point of like being ironic and such, but also like a secret love for it, like just going over, over the top with it, you know, yeah. um, all the classic, like, yeah, Bowie is fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but that's nice to kind of know that it's ironic, but also like you're really having fun with it and just like yeah. really enjoying it because that kind of that really comes across to people, I think, as well. That like I really like your your style and like your way of doing things because it's like I really like your voice as well. <laughs> but it's like how how you how you do things is like you know I, I feel like you're pretty self confident, but also it's it's clear that you're having fun and just like you know expressing yourself. Well, yeah, it's kind of a fallback option to be honest because like. It's, uh, it's genuine to the point where if people don't like it, you can be like, I was joking the whole time, guys. Uh, <laughs> Just made it up. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that leads me nicely into my next question. So I was going to ask you about your songwriting process. Yes. Um, because, yeah, exactly. Like you're studying songwriting at Leeds Conservatoire. And I kind of wanted to ask you, what is your process like and how that's been affected by by what, oh. you're, what you're studying and what kind of themes? Yeah, um, well, on what's uh un purposefully whatever that mm. word is um <laughs> i'm a songwriter um <laughs> that such, such stuff as dreams are made on was i just was writing a lot about dreams and like um whether that be in a metaphorical sense of what you want to happen or like a like a literal i was dreaming about this kind of thing that kind of cropped up so i guess there's like there's overall themes that kind of 
cascade over over months of me working without me realizing and then I'll look back and be like I really had that on my mind at the time and such but I um I have a fascination with like words and such um I'm not very good at it but I really like it my brother's does uh he's got it does English literature and such so it's all he's always the clever guy and I'm underneath kind of filtering through words and such about (laughs) it and um I, I I love um, kind of witty lyrics that explain mm. something clever, like that have um, kind of more depth to them if you want it. Like um, mm. the continuation of Seneca is based on this, like um, like this theory and this theologist and that. But mm. you know, you don't have to you don't have to know that. Like um, you can take it face value, or if you want to do some research, you can do it. Like I like songs that kind of give that aren't just you can take it face value, but it's got like a chunk of stuff underneath it that you can take if you like. Mm. And like big fancy words, I like to kind of just cram into a song and such, mm. which is yeah. just for my own benefit, to be honest. <laughs> my thoughts distend it out, it's too predictable. And honestly, I can relate. To every mistake Another solipsistic outbreak Is taking its toll Cause the times keep on changing Yet never let go And my heart keeps on sinking Cause once again I'm thinking The subterfuge has weighed me down And I'll try my best to keep my good intentions From jumping to hit the ground As soon as I get back up on my feet Everything's closed I get ripped back home There's that setback again There's that song in my head Wearing the clothes That I found in my old wardrobe Keeps on sinking, cause once again I'm thinking the subterfuge has weighed me down. And I'll try my best to keep my good intentions from jumping to hit the ground. The Alpha Sessions. Guitar is, is the kind of trailblazer for me in music, which is where all my ideas come from. But yeah. a lot of the style and the uh, influence I've had has been from the type of guitars I like, which is, I guess it's a, a good a reason as any. Like, um, you know, you, you find a guitar that you like and you buy it and then you think, who's a good person that plays all of these guitars? And then you start researching into them, which is where like the strats come from with mm-hmm. Clapton and that. Um, I recently got a... Um, like a 70s Les Paul, which is like mm. a John Lennon style stuff. And then it's just fun to watch. That's my access into music, basically. Yeah. If that person plays something that I'm interested in or have them, that is what I'll listen to. And then because, you know, I you can I spend a lot of time like tone hunting, I guess. And it helps if you've got a similar like start, like if that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, you know, definitely. But talking about guitars, you actually, you play lots of different types, don't you? You play piano and what, what else do you play? Yeah, so um, I, I came, when I started in music uni, I was starting to boast and be like, I'm a jack of all trades, I play everything. Because um, I'd just done an EP where I played all of the stuff, which was just like drum, as I was saying before, drums, bass, acoustic mm. guitar and all that stuff. Um, but then I suddenly had a shock and realised like, I mean, I can physically play them, but it's better to get someone else to play right. the, the music and stuff. So like, um, and for my first EP, which is Such Stuff As Dreams Are Made On, I've got really the best musicians in where, where I'm from, like mm-hmm. at Leeds Conservatoire. Like they're yeah. just, they're crazy good players. And it was, 
it was extremely collaborative process i just came in with the songs and we kind of just worked them out in the studio but this more recent one um such uh the nothing and no one because mm. it was locked down i couldn't really get to anyone and i quite like working in person with people so kind of just um although there is definitely collaboration on it and i've got some credits somewhere um it, a lot of it is just me like I was going to ask you about that, actually, because, yeah, your recent EP, Nothing and No One, is like some great songs of like what you say, self-reflection. And especially it was like yeah. it was written during lockdown. So I want to like have a chat about that in a second. But I was I was going to ask you about like the whole process of how you made it. So you, it was it was difficult to collaborate with anyone like in person. Yeah. So um, I've got a side hustle at the moment with my girlfriend called Harkin. Yeah. And that really was like we need to collaborate with people. We need to do loads of stuff. And so that we, sorry to sidetrack, but like- No, I was going to ask our, you about Harkin actually. That was all, <laughs> that was our, we need to collaborate with people. This is all like, we really want to play with our friends. But this EP that I was doing, it kind of just appeared out of nowhere. I was just writing mm. um, on my own, recording them. And then I looked back and I kind of had all the materials for an EP. And because I'd just been doing all of that Harkin stuff, I didn't kind of want to bother that many people for <laughs> it. Like, obviously, the drums are all recorded by uh, Emily. She's great. And she's <laughs> got a home kit, which is why I kind of felt comfortable in asking her, because it's not yeah. like she needs to come into the building and that. <laughs> but um, a lot of it was like, you know, I don't want to bother my uh, keys player to just play on the last chorus of a track. So I just kind of did it myself. It was uh, just out of a need to do it, to be honest. It's yeah. not preferential. But, but you had fun doing it. Yeah, though. I had a lot of fun yeah. doing it. It was, um, it's nice to look at the music from a different angle because you can get a bit um, kind of samey with guitar and that. You just always go to the same chords and inversions mm -hmm. and that. But with piano, there's a lot more to do. Um, and I had a, what actually was really interesting was I had a Hofner bass, like a Paul mm -hmm. McCartney bass on uh, just in the, in the flat at the time when I was doing it. And it's, I don't, whoever's played one they're completely different to a normal bass because it just misses out a lot of low end so you're forced to play faster and kind of fill in the space that's that's lacking with the with the chunk which was fun mm -hmm. um and that also helped me like uh i guess learn a lot more about production and how to kind of make up for the sound the frequencies that weren't there and everything which yeah. is good did, did you miss that kind of interaction that normally you'd have like been making it with other people was it like you know I guess like tell me if I'm wrong but like I imagine that sometimes you would kind of like bounce ideas off other people or think like should we go this way or that yeah. way how did you find like it took a long time to decide how you wanted to do things or you were you quite quick and just like well, just doing what you thing. wanted I feel a lot more intimate with this EP because like all of the ideas have basically stemmed from me mm -hmm. whereas with my other ones such stuff that was all done in a, um, a, a recording room in, in Elcom right. and like it's with other people. And so the songs can like, you know, you think you're going somewhere and it just jags off when someone's, when yeah. someone with a certain skill comes in and you're like, sure, we could put that instrument in and everything and have this stuff going. But, um, you know, like you're saying, it's it, all the decisions were me on that. And it's um, when I, when I had the idea in my head, it's finished that way instead of going in a different direction. So I suppose mm. it's uh, got good points and bad points to it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I think like the EP flows really well. Like it's got like, yeah. Do you want to tell us more about like some of the songs on the EP? Like that I really love Pipe Dream that you Dream. did with Marnie Glum, who yes. Marnie's been on Alf Sessions. Um, and that, yeah, I, I just think that's a really... I don't know if fun is the right word, but I just, there's a lot of clever lyrics, not only in that song, but in a lot of other songs on the EP. But did you want to like, just talk us yeah. through like some of that? So um, I was living with Marnie at the time and mm -hmm. um, we kind of just sat down to write a Josh Aitken song, um, whatever that means. <laughs> um, but I hadn't written for a while. And I think my influences were, were um, had changed at the time. I was listening to a lot of Novo Amor, which is this guy who has this amazing falsetto voice and he lines them all up, which is okay. on the pipe dream. There's a lot of um, high it's I'm just basically singing, yes. but also doubling up with stuff, which mm. adds a lot of texture, um, yeah. but it was really nice. And I haven't written that much with Marnie before, but it was strange to write when someone is kind of not yet. Yeah, yeah. They're writing for you. Like they are, usually when you collaborate with someone, you kind of take into everyone's um, like perspective and that, and the song can change and everything. But because it was, we started out writing just for me, 
I kind of had, I guess, executive choice on like things were made, which I guess is good, but also bad because it just set us in our ways a little bit more. But it was a crazy new experience for me, yeah. basically. Um, she's a very good writer, as you, mm. well, the song, I guess, shows really good the merit song, of yeah. that. But um, yeah, we, well, this, as I was saying, lockdown, um, I didn't want to bother anyone again. So I, that's where the uh, drums have come from. It's like an 808, kind mm-hmm. of just like MIDI, MIDI bass thing. And that kind of set the groove for us, really. It's a, um, and then what else was it? The topic of it was, <laughs> well, we didn't know what we wanted to write about. And <laughs> Marnie was just like, vent to me about stuff. Mm. And so I did. And at the end of it, she was like, it seems like you're kind of getting feeling like your life is over at the ripe old age of 20 20 <laughs> and then that's that's essentially we just nicked that mm. and but, so the um, rest just kind of came from yeah that. yeah yeah well wow. once I guess the idea was always in me you know but mm. you know once um someone else tells you what you're already thinking it kind of just spurs on loads of ideas to write about stuff and so I, I guess I just kind of honed in on that and talking about like well, I guess common experiences like doing your shopping, climbing upstairs and just feeling like you're like 60 years old. Do you know what mm. I mean? You just mm. out of breath and stuff. Um, so I guess the the first verse is about feeling like your your life is over. And then the second kind of section is the kind of you uh, wishing you'd done stuff differently. And mm. you always, you know, whenever something goes wrong or you're feeling lost, in general you always kind of go back to think about what you could have done differently and Mm. kind of change the situation that you're now in instead of instead of changing your current situation I always tend to look back to how I could have done it differently which isn't Mm. a very good like thing to do because I'm already there like you can't change it it's done (laughs) yeah exactly but um I guess that's just um comes from um self-sabotage to be honest I hear slow dancing in the background But the tape's worn down and I think about All the times that I've missed it To play it on repeat now I made it up the stairs today But tripped and fell down memory lane Get back in my bags, put out a cup of tea and custard cream will sort me right out. Ripe old age of 20, they told me I'd go far, but Elvis was a rock star before I knew what I wanted to be. Is it too late for me? Is it too late to see And how my life would be Is it too late for me To find myself a different pipe dream Maybe if I'd met Brian at the Cavern Club Or wasted less time at the country pub I'd be kicking back on Palm Beach Instead of getting the bus back from uni If I'd gotten out of bed more Or put my life back into the stock market I'd be on the red carpet I guess I got a lot of things to answer for Right old age of 20 They told me I'd go far But Elvis was a rock star Before I knew what I wanted to be Is it too late for me? Is it too late to see? And how my life would be? Is it too late for me? To find myself a different pipe dream? Where did the times go? Things move so slow At the end of the line Where am I supposed to go? Right old age of 20 Right old age of 20 Cause Elvis was a rock star Yes, Elvis was a rock star Right old age of 20 Right old age of 
20, yeah, yeah. Cause Elvis was a rock star. Yes, Elvis was a rock star. Ripe old age of 20. They told me I'd go far, but Elvis was a rock star. Before I knew what I wanted to be, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it too late to see? Is it too late to see? And how my life would be? Is it too late for me to find myself a different pipe dream? Thank you. The Alpha Sessions. Maybe I took something like slightly different or additional for that song, but I felt like it was saying that there was too much pressure. You felt like there was too much pressure yeah. to do too much to like to know already what you wanted to be. And I just like felt was that something that was in the song as well? Yeah, it was. It was. There's a lot of I've written some other songs like it before that have kind of leaked out with that same ideology. But it's just like the biggest thing in my life at the moment is choosing between commerce and um What's the word? Starts with an I. Does it? Oh, oh I don't know. I feel like I'm on a game show Being, now. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Genuine. Like, what's the uh, another word for that? I've forgotten. Intuitive? But like, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like being yourself. Instinctive? Yes. Um, and you, yeah, basically, because like you can, you can do function bands and do covers and earn a bit of money to be able to support yourself. But if you don't want to be doing that and you want to, be writing songs that mean something to you and stuff yeah. it's, it's hard mm. and like um I guess it's something that I'm working on at the moment which is making my genre a bit more um accessible to like modern people because um a lot of my influences are just like old men with guitars and such and I don't <laughs> think that that has much um kind of grasp on today's stuff and also like I love intros like I would make a three-minute intro to a mm. song if I could but I know that it, that's not what um kind of goes on Spotify at the moment mm -hmm. and it's just a lot of do you know what it is it's it's the fact that you, I feel like today you have to be a business person as well yeah. as a musician and like yeah. I I don't know if I would have made the same choice if I if someone had come to me and said you can be you can dedicate your life to this but you also have to start looking at algorithms of websites mm -hmm. and like um kind of doing tactical marketing and such yeah instead of just kind of writing and stuff because they're two separate they're two separate um, yeah. professions aren't they to be honest yeah no it's difficult isn't it I mean that's just like yeah such a like a classic thing to to be up against because you want to like spend your life like being like authentic and like producing your own music yeah. but at the same time like you've got to make a living out of yeah, it as well yeah. <laughs> but like you don't want to compromise what you do and but, but I think like it's interesting because you are across quite a few genres and you gave us like more kind of like jazz jazz style just a friend a little yes. while ago I was gonna say like how do you so you are like pretty flexible you're pretty versatile yeah. how was that kind of doing like a more jazz number and was that kind of where do you feel like your kind of heart is or is it like a bit of everywhere it's, well that's the thing right uh, I absolutely love doing that jazz one but I don't know if I'd go back to it just because right. I've kind of done that I've been there and done it yeah um but it, it's basically just from listening to old record, you know, musicians are always trying to find a new sound to kind yeah. of get in, whether that's with sampling or like just inspiration. And I was listening to some Chet Baker, mm. the trumpet guy. And I was like, wow, that's such a good vibe to go yeah. with. Um, so I kind of called in my musicians, double bass, piano and such. Mm. But um, yeah, I kind of write, and this is a very like escape answer. I kind of write what I'm feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, like with the Novo and more stuff with Pipe Dream, it's what I'm listening to at that at that moment that serves as a as a main um, influence mm. for the song. Like um, I was listening to a lot of Paramore mm. um, a few months ago, and then someone was like, "Would you mind writing a song for me?" And I was like, "Okay, well, I'll be writing a Paramore song for you." Yeah. <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, because um, with the with the songwriting a degree I'm doing at the moment, it's really changed my perspective on how to write um, and it's a lot more uh, direct and purposeful my writing now like I guess I don't write as much for um, just uh, directionless like um, oh I just I just wrote and it ended up like this I'll have a firm idea on what I want to do before I start and then um, 
you know, unless a different musician comes in and like. And where does inspiration come to you? Is it kind of like, is it pretty regular or just like, does something have to happen in your life? And then you're like, oh, I need to write about that. How? Um, and then what's your kind well, of, do you get it down? As any writer will tell you, inspiration always definitely helps when writing a song. And you can write a song just off the back of inspiration. Like you could do it in like an hour, write a song. Um but I think the hardest point thing is is writing when you're not inspired to write, which is something that I was definitely forcing when doing nothing and no one, mm. um, just because that was what we were doing in college at the time. Um, and it's because you look you 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 know you don't have to rely on feeling that much anymore. And and if you can write when you're not inspired, you can write whenever you want. Mm. So um, I guess I like writing when I am inspired. But for nothing and no one, it was like. I don't like to use the word force because that makes it sound like it's not fun. But I, I did sit down. I sat myself down and went, we're going to write a song today and it's going to be good. Mm. Yeah. And how long did the whole um, EP take to write? Do you know what? Not that long. I think maybe four months. But oh, that's okay. alongside other stuff. Like yeah. I was... Um, I was looking back at... I said talk about uni again, but it's, uh, I was looking back at... Um, stuff I must, stuff must have written about 400 so, uh, not 400 about 100 songs mm. last year just just for college yeah right and so these this stuff and nothing and no one's kind of been like just in between when I don't I'm not writing and such if that makes sense yeah like you just kind of jag it in when you've got a bit of yeah. free time and such which is fun yeah and yeah. you're inspired by the person you've had a collaboration with that week and stuff and it's nice yeah no, definitely. I like, uh, just to go back to one of the songs, um, I really like one of the lyrics from Dust, uh, staring at my lamp even though it's bland, picking the wallpaper till it's ruined. And like, yeah. I just think like, it's, I don't know, it just really resonates with me because it's just, I don't know, it's just like really kind of honest lyrics that you think, okay, and then you think about it and it's like, yeah, it just like, thank you. just <laughs> really kind of says what's going on. Well, at that point, I was sat on the end of my bed uh, with my guitar and nothing was coming and I was like hold on a minute I've felt this feeling before of being completely lost but it, but just being fine like physically I'm fine but I'm just like and it whether it's about someone or something or anything you just kind of you just kind of zone out don't you you go mm. to a different dimension yeah. and um, when you wake up you've been like fiddling with your hands or like mm -hmm. peeling wallpaper or like staring into a lamp until you've got the the burn right into your eyes just right <laughs> yeah. so that was that but um yeah I I'm glad it's relatable thank you yeah <laughs> and then going back to like you mentioned before you have a duet with Harkin um are you is it like a kind of joint songwriting yeah thing or, yeah so how does that kind of compare doing that stuff like joint songwriting compared to writing by yourself well, um, I feel like um, the Harkon was made just for fun, to be honest. Mm. Like we didn't need to do it, but we wanted to. And I think although there's about the same listener base for both, for mm. me, um, I felt a lot more like I had to put on a certain vibe and such mm. for Josh Aitken than I did with Harkin. And because um, the person I write with, Katie Billis, is so different to my music, um, it was fun to just kind of meet in the middle and do stuff because yeah. we've got similar influences in that. And um, we were just fun. We, we just spent a while talking, like, wouldn't it be fun if we wrote this kind of song or this kind of song? Mm. And then we were like, well, why don't we then? And just do it. Yeah. Um, but your voices really like complement each thank other. You very much. Yeah. Is. Yeah. We have a lot of fun writing, to be honest. It's um, mm. that is something actually that we, we don't force ourselves down to write for Harkin because there's no, there's no reason to, if that makes sense. Yeah. We, if yeah. we, if we want to write a song, then, then we'll do it in the moment and that, yeah. that's why I guess this the songs those songs feel very fun I think mm. I listen yeah. back at least <laughs> yeah definitely and how has like gigging been for you now things are opening up did you do any online gigs during lockdown have you, have you got like plans to do more gigs now things are opening up um I kind of dropped off the map uh, during mm. lockdown and that and I um have some things about um online gigs and that that mm. were I don't know. I just didn't want to do them, to be honest, because I was so upset about not being able to do yeah. them in person. Um, yeah, I've had some really good gigs, actually, uh, since we've started. I play uh, guitar in Marnie Glum's band, so I've mm -hmm. been doing those fairly frequently. Um, we had a, I did a um, slot for Eleanor Joy at a Porto, 
which was really really good um which was recorded and it like properly recorded and mixed which was mm -hmm. um weird to see yourself um hd on stage yeah and such. usually it's just through an iphone 5 like mm. <laughs> achy, um that your mum's done um, yeah <laughs> but um we we had a gig recently with harkin that was just crazy crazy good and fun um and we spent so much time working on it and um it was it it was more of a show than a gig to be mm. fair like um we'd all dressed dressed up um weird and done stuff and it was just it was I don't usually have that much fun doing gigs to be honest because I'm focused on um what I'm playing and whether it's sounding right in that but um because well as I say I'm a guitarist in Marnie Glum's band I want to mm. make sure that I sound the best for her but uh, we, me and Katie for Harkin had basically surrounded ourselves with the best musicians we knew mm. um, and kind of in a bad way, just kind of let them do all the hard work. <laughs> so you so enjoyed we just, it a bit more. Yeah, 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 yeah. We just enjoyed it. I mean, they, um, what was so good about it was they, they, they played on the songs, so they kind of knew them anyway. Like mm. um, it wasn't too much of a kind of grasp to get them to, to learn it and everything. So we did have fun. We did have fun. Yeah. And it, it lets us do stuff that we don't usually do like with um Josh Aiken and stuff I would never have been able to do a rap some kind of rap um that's true I wouldn't expect that yeah well exactly <laughs> so for Harkin whack it right in there sure yeah. yeah and it works it works really well thank you yeah and so what is the what's the plan for you for the rest of the year you're working on a, a new EP is there anything you can say about so it I'm kind of well I'm not taking a break I am re gearing up you know, if this was if this was a race at the moment, I'm washing the car. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm I'm taking everything in, um, writing stuff down in my notes book yeah. booklet and such, which is um, daunting because you know that everything you write down that could be the next song. And like yeah. I, you go through your old notes and you're like, that's a song, that's a song, mm -hmm. that's a song, that's a song, um, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I like to kind of um, listen to a lot of stuff. I like to learn other songs find out what they've done and then go interesting mm. and then kind of put it to the back of my mind and the next time I come to write I'm like oh I need a new flavor of chord or something that I can just whack in and I'll go Ding, that's mm -hmm. it I know that yeah <laughs> which is good yeah it's, um but I I'm not doing that much at the moment because we've got some gigs going on Marnie Glum mm. we've got a gig in Manchester that I'm um, rehearsing for and such yeah um, cool. and I'm I after my EP I took a massive break from doing any kind of production and I mm -hmm. came back to it the other day and I was like I've kind of forgotten everything so <laughs> I've just been uh, I do this thing which is um I put it on my TikToks and such mm -hmm. where I try and record a song as accurately as it's recorded on the on the thing just using like logic stock sounds yeah which is fun I've done like um um true by Spandau Ballet is a good one can't fight this feeling REO Speedwagon and that mm -hmm. which is good um yeah, so I need, I'm just getting back into producing, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And I'm really excited for you for like what the future is going to hold Thank for you. I think much. it's going to be really cool. Yes. How can people listen to you, subscribe, all that kind of stuff? Yes. All your socials. Okay, so Josh Aiken Music on every platform, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, if you can think of it, I've got it. Like, You're there. Back. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> um, I'm on everything as well on Spotify, uh, iTunes, Amazon Music, uh, Deezer, literally everything. Um, and message me, you know, if you're a musician and you want to collaborate, let's go for it. I you love that. And stuff, let's do it. <laughs> I, I'll talk to anyone about anything within that. reason. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been thank you very much for having me. You. It's been very thank fun. Thank you. Thanks. I'm not saying. I want it to be back again But the silence took over And wanted to stay just as friends Let's pick up where we left off To watch it break But what exactly were we Expecting this toll to take Promises take just as long to defend When your love is just waiting for the song to end 
but I won't believe you. I'm better than that. But doing nothing with you is better than doing nothing. But doing nothing with you is better. That I'm doing nothing at all Cause I'm breaking my back From stopping this thing from falling So I'll try my best To stop myself from coming off as fake Or singing a love song to two cars Listen to our hearts and tears. Promises take just as long to defend when your love is just waiting for the song to end. But I won't believe you. I'm better than that. And so the time is coming up, and maybe we'll see. Thank you.